السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ خوش آمدی جی آیا نو خوئی مرخ بخیر اگلے نی ہاؤ جولشم میں وش ولے او ہائے گنزائی مس گوٹن مارگن اولا بو یور پریویت کئی فحال حال شما چطورے اہل و سال مرحبا بونا موچو گراسیا سوابی آب این ایوری امیزن گڈ مارننگ تو ایوری باڈی who's tuned into PTV World and Awachi World this morning alongside the very fabulous, the very amazing Shiza Hashmi and Shahza Khan. <laughs> Hello Shiza, how are you on this fine Monday morning? Hi. I believe that the weather is changing. Oh yes, thankfully so. Thank you so much for asking. I'm doing great. What about you? And before you answer that, yeah. I'm really genuinely asking that this how are you because Shahzad, <laughs> I came across a video yeah. where Shahzad was a human obstacle standing in the center with, you know, racing cars just playing around him and it was so scary to look at that yeah. we'll share it tomorrow probably or even today yeah we'll but how was it what well, was well it was very scary ladies and gentlemen so i was uh, in karachi over the weekend and i was doing this uh, amazing so it was uh, pakistan's biggest stunt show and yes. uh, i think that we really need to give credit where it's due so mountain dew thank you very much for giving me the opportunity as well but then at the same time it was fabulous i was a little scared hmm. but then the drivers were really uh, professional and oh, they, they kind of kept it together as well but, no, uh, but for a moment did you feel like you know what yeah, this so, may get loose so so when the the driver just came right next to me because they were drifting around hmm. me in a 360 degree angle as well so all of a sudden when he stopped so he was just right next to my knee and i was like okay so <laughs> so yeah and if you're going to watch the video so i'm just you know just when the car sta- uh, stop You know, I, I actually take in a deep breath as well and then I'm like, okay, thank God, I'm fine. And so that was an adventurous Yeah, it was, it was very mm-hmm. adventurous and while I was hosting the entire show, so obviously the cars were going around, so I actually have to be very careful about, you know, so that do, nobody bumps into mm. me. Yeah, because if they bump into me, nothing's going to happen to me, but I might not be around then, Aww, God forbid. Come on. Yeah, so for everybody who's out there, you know, we definitely do not want anybody to try all of these things. These were professional people. Of course. And we really need to look after ourselves, okay? So please, don't do this at home. And don't do this at home, of course, but this is something good that we're looking at, Shazad. Now yeah. we have something, a recreational activity, something f- for the families, you know, exactly. to do something fun together. So yeah. uh, let's see, I mean... Which is why the best part is that uh, on Wednesday, we will probably be in Multan, then oh, uh, wow. over the weekend we'll be in Gujramwala, then in Islamabad and oh, then wow. in Lahore. So if my family is watching right now in Multan, you guys have to go to his show. We'll do that. All right. So Shazad, here's the thing. You know, when you talk about developing countries yeah. and when we talk about developing cities in general, yeah. urbanization and whatnot, we are generally and mostly talking about, you know, high rise buildings and whatnot, exactly. pro- uh, providing good infrastructure to the yeah. people, providing good uh, conveyance facilities, whatnot, public transport, probably even yeah. health facilities and stuff. Yeah. Um, but when we're looking at development in, uh, I mean, on a broader level, yeah. I feel like human development, personality development, so many other things come in aspect as well. Uh, exactly. Just to try to explain that a little better, I mean, imagine a country where everything is so fancy, everything that we imagine for a perfect developed country yeah. to be, but the people, they don't even know how to, you know, deal with that exactly. or how to deal with each other or how to build a community, how exactly. to build their own personality. So basically, I feel like we are neglecting that factor all yeah. over the world. Yeah, well, I believe that we are not actually neglecting that factor, but for everybody who's out there, you know, whatever is in their capacity, they tend to learn that. Yeah. But then other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the government should, uh, the government all over the world should actually be responsible for the development of their people mm. and you know when we talk about developed countries I believe that the developed countries are developed is because of the fact that in the first place they have invested within their own people in mm. terms to develop and give them their tool sets as well but if God forbid you do not have that skill set which is to probably use or which is to put to use to use all of these technological advancements, mm-hmm. I don't think that that skill set is actually going to help. So in the first place, before you develop that, that kind of technology, you develop that kind of capacity within your own people. Absolutely. And then when you actually invest in human development, what happens is that, you know, that the economy in general is going to get better, hmm. people's standards, lives, everything's going to get better. But how is it going to have an impact on a country where you are still developing? I don't think that people are even thinking or the mm. governments are even thinking about investing on developing uh, the people and the skill set as well. Absolutely. And you explained it so much better. I wish I would. I've, I already <laughs> had let you do it. But I feel like this is the discussion that we should be having yeah. with our very apt panel of guests over yes. here in the studio. So without Exactly. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the best part over here is that uh, when we talk about human development, these people, hmm. you know, they've actually made uh, a lot of uh, early childhood development centers as well. 
and what they do is that even before you have conceived a baby they yeah. started work they start to work with you and they start to let you know and then the, then they make you aware of uh, what things to be which needs to be done and how do we actually need to go about it okay so without any further ado ladies and gentlemen on my uh, over here in, <laughs> in the studios we have actually been joined by a social activist she's none other than mrs khatija hi assalamu alaikum how are you assalamu alaikum i'm very well how are you Jay? absolutely perfect and thank you very much thank for you. joining us thank alongside you. mrs khatija ladies and gentlemen we have been joined by the chairman rupani foundation he's none other than Mr. Nasruddin Rupani. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Wa Alaikum Assalam. And thank you very much for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, it is him, Mr. Nasruddin uh, Rupani, who's actually developed more than 100 early childhood development centers all, all over Pakistan. Yes. And not just that, they've even developed applications for your phone, which can actually help you in developing uh, yeah, your your child's future and your own as well. And you know where there are areas where they cannot develop centers or even yep. you know apps cannot go there? They have mobile units yes. which yeah, go there and train centers. families, which is yeah. absolutely Parents, amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah, inspiring to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it's great. And for my producers who are out there, please, can we just turn on the AC a little bit oh. as well? It's just getting a little hot <laughs> over here. Yeah, so Mrs. Khatija, let's, let's get started with you. Yeah. When we talk about human development, what mm. kind of human development are we referring to? Okay, I gave them a very generic mm. definition or yeah. how or the understanding I have about human development, but in this case it can be different. So please yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much no for uh, giving us time and I have already had one more show with you guys yes. here yep. on the same topic. Yeah. So I will uh, try to not to repeat whatever I have already <laughs> said. Okay. Well, for us um, and for everybody, it should be the case like uh, a human development starts right from the beginning, right? As uh, Chairman earlier said that uh, we start human development before even the child is conceived. We, uh, we try to work with the parents, we try to give them awareness about the uh, upbringing and about uh, the overall development of okay. the child. And the development starts from, uh, from mother's womb. So yeah. before conceiving the child, it's very important for the mother to be healthy, not uh, healthy just in terms of uh, physically, but uh, the mother has to be mentally healthy, socially, she has to be active and um, physically, of course, she has to healthy to conceive right. the baby. Yeah. So the development starts from there. And uh, in, uh, in, in this sector, in the early childhood de development sector, we talk about the different areas of uh, the domains of development, mm -hmm. the cognitive development, physical development, language development, <coughs> social and emotional development. Right. So if you put all these together, then it um, becomes holistic development of mm -hmm. a child. And if you lay a proper sound foundation right from the beginning, then um, um, then it, it, it ultimately leads to the overall uh, development of the human, the overall mm. development of uh, society. Wow. All right, yeah. so you're saying it does absolutely start from the childhood? Yeah, and, uh, even now before, even before the childhood, when the child as I womb, said, yeah, even before conceiving the child, the oh. mother has to be healthy. Yeah, the mother has mm. to be really ready to conceive the child. Mm. All right, because so it approach... has a direct correlation on the development of the yeah. child, on the brain development of yeah. the child, because mm. Research says um, first thousand days, which starts from conception to up to the uh, second birthday of mm. the child. Um, and research says that the brain develops uh, during these uh, first thousand days, like um, it develops uh, 90 percent oh, or, right. or uh, even even more than that. <coughs> so you can really see where um, where the real human development starts and where we have to really mm. focus our energy and um, we need to really have a proper direction to Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. But uh, Nasuddin Saab, it is very different over here in Pakistan. I mean, even if we talk about child conception, mm. I believe that it's uh, it comes to, uh, as a surprise to the mother. Oh, yeah, I'm pregnant today. Yeah. <coughs> so, it's, it's not planned over here. How do you think that we can actually help sort this out and so that people actually have a direction, even for their babies which are mm. conceived that, you know, okay, you, we should actually plan it. Yeah, and that's uh, another very important area that we need to address. Yep. I think uh, so. When we in the beginning, what we were told or we understood is that uh, the mother's lap is the mm. first school of the child. Yeah. yeah. But now the science has already uh, proven, and it is uh, basically the new science is telling us that mother's womb is the first school of the child. Mm. So it's very simple that mother needs to be teacher before conceiving the child. 
Yeah. Right. So she can teach. If she's not a teacher, how can she teach the child in her womb? So hmm. our Rupani Foundation really believes in it, how to really prepare the mother before conceiving a child so she can give the best to the child. So child has the best development. Okay. Like uh, the brain development uh, in the mother's womb, it happens within the four week of the, the conceiving. All right. And 25% uh, of the brain is developed here in mother's womb. Okay. If you notice, the head and the body hmm. is equal when the child is born. So head hmm. has a lot of, uh, I mean, importance here. And so whatever mother really uh, thinks and does and, and reads and as much her mind, uh, she Work. uses her brain, it stimulates a child's brain. So it is oh. very critical that, ma that mother's brain uh, situation should be happy, healthy, mm. uh, and she should have very a good critical. environment so she can stimulate the child's brain. Because okay. if our mothers are going to be stressed out throughout the pregnancy, mm. it is going to affect the, the child's uh, development. And this is what I think I am, through my foundation, addressing it today. Mm. that uh, today we have almost, I was told 44% our children uh, are stunting yeah. and, yes, and basically, so if we have our anemic mothers who are really producing uh, stunting children, we need to address it and, and I think we should call an emergency on it because mm. this is an emergency. If we have 44% of our new generation are not at the, that optimum development, they will never be a productive citizen of yeah, this country. Absolutely, yeah. agreed. And you know what, um, Shazad, like you mentioned before the question that you know most usual than often in Pakistan or in even different parts of the world, um, pregnancies are not planned. Exactly. Mm. So, I mean, imagine if the baby itself is not planned, how are parents even ready to bring it up or, you know, even to, uh, like you said, mothers are schools, to teach them okay. or to, you know, tell them about the society. So, <coughs> when, when a kid is coming into the world, everyone, mm. even the families, Nani, Adadi and the parents, they're thinking mm. about how they're going to make the kid grow up, what he's going to mm. like, what they're going to teach them. Mm. But no one talks about or thinks about schooling the parents first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially, very critical, right, yeah. especially yeah. for the people who are having the first child, mm. they're going to be parents for the first time, don't they need schooling? Yeah. So you are going to so many different parts of the country. Yeah. How has the response been and are the parents really open to the idea of being schooled? Yeah. Um, I, I would suggest uh, Chairman responds to that okay. question okay, because ahead, he has already done a, a lot <laughs> of work on that. Sure. Okay. And I will just just said later on. Oh, yeah. Go on. Yeah. I mean, basically, um, our experience is, uh, I mean, they're overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever we have been there, they are welcoming us. We have been uh, uh, really uh, overwhelmed with the, the uh, desire and eagerness to learn. So uh, our challenge today is that really uh, not, I would not take uh, urban, but uh, I'm talking about the rural areas where okay. more mothers are because Rupani Foundation is really working in the poorest of the poor areas where this is a tremendous need hmm. of this development. That's and, amazing. And so when we really address that, uh, our challenge uh, in the rural areas is that uh, as soon as you get married, first thing is to have a child hmm. Yeah. Hmm. without thinking that uh, do we have a budget for it? Is it really... Is my body is a, ready for it? Am I mentally ready, mentally ready, for, ready for it? Yeah. And that's a, this needs to be addressed because... Hmm. Um, the, if we really want to create an urgency on this, yeah. this has to be addressed. That uh, because the girl has just arrived in a new setting, I know, yeah. right? And she has to please everyone. She has to do a lot of work, and during pregnancy, she is stressed out. Right. If she's yeah. stressed out, imagine what impact she can uh, deliver to the child. Mm. So our, our main, uh, I think, uh, urgency should be that we really need to have a, a, a clear understanding Absolutely. that give us a minimum space to the mother who is pregnant mm. and support the mother. We need to really uh, change our uh, nucleus of our families mm. exactly. because the, as soon as the, the new uh, <coughs> married uh, mother comes into mm. place, she's pleasing the entire family. So yeah. much pressure. So much mm. pressure. Yeah. And she's stressed out. Instead, we should, the entire family should be supporting her while she's pregnant. And this is very, very critical that we must support I mean, and any woman uh, who's pregnant in the family, we must support the entire mm. family, the in-laws, everybody will have to support because yeah. we have to understand anything that you I mean, put her in, under stress, mm. it is going to impact the f your future generation. Yes. Because that's Directly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that, that's great. But then at the mm. same time, ladies and gentlemen, well, uh, you know, it's harder than, the, uh, harder than sad, you know, 
because of the fact that, uh, yeah, I mean, within the rural areas, we know how people have a different kind of behavior in urban uh, uh, places we have, we know that people have a different kind of behavior mm. and I believe that education definitely plays a very vital mm, and a yeah. pivotal role. But other than that, uh, uh, what I want to say over here is that, you know, for all of those parents who are out there and who are actually becoming the parent for the first time, mm. fortunately or unfortunately, things can go wrong. There are a lot mm. of cousin marriages as well and then, you know, there can be Complications, children uh, who are actually born with Down syndrome, children mm. who are actually deaf, children who cannot really speak. So, you know, I think that, you know, that the parents really need to be prepared for what is going to happen when they're going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And there are ways and mediums with, through which you can actually tell whether the baby is fine or not, even during the pregnancy. Yeah, right. But other than that, mm -hmm. uh, there's one thing which, which, uh, which, which is very superb, and that is that one of the mobile company actually came up with mobile sets where mm -hmm. even if you are blind, deaf, or you cannot speak, uh, the best part is that the mobile will actually help you communicate. Hmm. But the sole reason why I'm actually mentioning this is... Hmm. Yeah, all right. So th thank you so much for no actually problem. taking on it. But um, first of all, about technology, yes, it's improving. It's helping a lot of people with special needs. And Shasad, you mentioned, you know, how parents are sometimes not ready for the unexpected. I mean, of course, it is definitely a gift from the Creator Almighty, but you have to be prepared on how to deal with it, how to yeah. live with the situation, right? Mm. Exactly. And can I be honest over here? It's sort sure. of a confession. I'm absolutely embarrassed to say that I don't even I do know some of the basics but I don't know entire or a lot of the sign language okay. itself okay. it did happen to me once that unfortunately um, I had to sort of interact with someone who was yeah. not very good with words they mm -hmm. had special needs you know they had mm -hmm. some problem with their speech mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to communicate with them I felt so helpless I mean I'm standing in front of a person we are almost similar in yeah. every other way and we can't communicate because of my fault because I don't know sign language. Mm. Exactly. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm mentioning this because today we're also observing Globally International Sign Language Day and yeah. how important, absolutely important it is for everyone to be on the same page so yeah. that, I mean, equality we're looking at. Uh, we do have a report on this Yeah, right we do we? have a report, ladies and gentlemen, but the theme for 2019 is Sign Language Rights for All and I believe that it is very important. and. I'm very proud that Pakistan Television Network has actually got bulletins uh, alongside sign languages as yes, well. So absolutely. I believe that it's great and I think that everybody needs to do that. And one more, just taking advantage of this uh, opportunity and on this day, uh, I just want everybody out there where, while they're developing infrastructure that the infrastructure really needs to be inclusive, inclusive for all the people, absolutely. people who are on wheelchairs people who are deaf, people who are blind. Hmm. I think that it, it should be accessible for everybody. Buses should actually be, uh, you know, because while I was in England, yeah. I, I, I witnessed it over there that if there's somebody on a wheelchair hmm. and the bus and he or she is on the bus stop, so the bus arrives, they press a button yes. and the bus plane lowers down yes. and yes. then a plate comes out and then you can actually climb onto the bus. Hmm. So which is why I'm going to share a report, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead, take a look. I mean, you guys will come back We'll actually talk about the early childhood development centers and how uh, the centers have actually helped uh, in human development. Some real life okay. stories. Let's yeah. do that. Sign languages are fully fledged natural languages structurally distinct from the spoken languages. There is also an international sign language which is used by deaf people in international meetings and informally when traveling and socializing. It is considered a pidgin form of sign language that is not as complex as natural sign languages and has a limited lexicon. There are approximately 72 million deaf people worldwide. More than 80% of them live in developing countries. Collectively, they use more than 300 different sign languages. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities recognizes and promotes the use of sign languages. The first International Day of Sign Language was celebrated in 2018 under the theme With Sign Language, Everyone is Included. So back in 2017, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, the uh, resolution was actually adopted and uh, it was uh, in December. And it was adopted that on 23rd of September every year, International Day for Sign Language will yes. be uh, observed. And the sole reason why it's actually being observed on 23rd of September is that WDF was formed on the same date as well. Thank and you. I believe that it's great and everybody needs to be in this direction as well. And Chiza, hmm. while you were watching the report, said a very sure. beautiful thing that all of those people who are actually born with such disabilities, a, they yeah. know how to cope up with that. But it's us who do mm -hmm. not really understand them. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that we have to develop our own capacity. True. And this is human development. Imagine that the society is going to be more inclusive. 
there'll be communication in between people and we can do wonders. Yeah. So that's great. But well, very quickly, sir, uh, before we wrap up this segment, I actually want you to let us know about the early childhood development centers and how they have contributed towards human development. See, um, I think I want to just reiterate this early, early childhood development is really not a child development. Okay. Hmm. We target the child, but it's really we are doing, uh, really empowering the mother to become the teacher family. at home. Okay. Yeah. So once the mother is teacher, she knows, understands her role and responsibility at home. And once the mother is empowered, she really uh, contributes in developing her family. Hmm. And our experience is really that, that mother is really uh, is developing the society. She's part of the society. Yep. Mothers are the one who really develop in the community. Definitely. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte mm -hmm. uh, had said uh, hundreds of years ago that give me good mothers and yes. I'll give you a good nation. Yes. Yes. It is doable. If we prepare our mothers and empower our mothers and, and let them know what their role is yep. in development of the child, development of the community and development of society, so mothers can deliver. It just need to give them a spark. And I think through our program, Rupani Foundation has really uh, emphasized that we need to develop our mothers, mm. give them opportunity. And they are the one who would really, I call it myself, that we need to have uh, every mother to be a CEO at home. Because yeah. right. that right. is the key. If you really mm. ask the mother to be a CEO at home, she understands her role and responsibility. Because child is really, um, I would say, uh, mother's reflection, yes. Yes. right? Yeah. So if the mother is empowered, automatically child will learn from the mother and, and becomes uh, an empowered person. Yes. So mother has a great role to play in the mother, uh, in, the, in the life of the child. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, so I don't mean to negate anything, but for my own understanding, for a very long time you've been saying a mother needs to be mm. educated, a mother's need to, mother no, needs to be that. No, I'm don't. just asking, when you're looking at a child development and, you know, bringing up a child, isn't it a family's part? It is. Why it does is. one yeah. person yeah. have to be educated? Yeah, but I no, but think the main... Mother's no, no. getting a first-hand experience yeah, of the, having the a main, baby. Yeah, let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me explain yes. this. Uh, the emphasis uh, in uh, Ropani Foundation's approach, the emphasis is on mother, but okay. Uh, it, it does not really only involve mothers. Mm. It, 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 the program offers opportunities to the whole family, Perfect. like grandparents, fathers, because in the Rupani Foundation centers, fathers also are invited once a week right. to come and do the whole activities with their children, me and my dad. The mm. program is called Me and My Dad. And you know what? The children love to um, participate with their fathers. Yeah. And research has proved because uh, those children who spend more time with their fathers or those fathers who really play an active role in the development of their children are more active and more confident. Thank so. you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Rainer. Confident for sure. So, yes, yeah, I uh, very quickly, I, I've, I've got one more thing to say over here. And uh, I'm sorry that I've picked up on it, but yes, uh, that's what I do. Okay. Can I so, so, so one minute. Yeah, so, sure. uh, so while Mr. Nasuddin was actually speaking about mother's role, yeah. he said that the mothers really need to be the CEO of the house, right? And that's the moment when you started smiling. That's what I'm saying, that for mothers, it is so hard to mm. accept that yes, that this is the role which they have been given. Uh, isn't it so? Yeah. That, that it is so hard for our women to understand that they really can lead from the front while they're at homes as well. Mm. Yeah. Why do you think that it's not possible? Why do you think that it's not doable? Because that smile told me no, it's that it's doable. something very out of the box. No, no, okay. no. It's doable. It's hmm. completely doable. And I really salute those mothers who are playing an active role yeah. in, in the upbringing of their children. And not just the children, mothers are, I would say, the center of the family yeah. and mm. they are the ones who really uh, give you a conducive, healthy environment exactly. at Absolutely. home if they play an active and positive role. Indeed. So I, I smiled because... Um, because you agreed with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm already a CEO, but I'm in CEO in the <laughs> office. Somebody else is CEO at home. So <laughs> Somebody so else is CEO at home. Yeah, okay, that yeah I... Sorry. Can I just add one more yes. point? Yes. There is a misconception about early childhood de development. Mm. The misconception is not only, it doesn't only prevail uh, with uneducated people. Yep. It equally, I mean, prevails with us as well. We think that early childhood development starts maybe after age four or age five. No, that's not 
correct? Mm. Early childhood development starts even before the child is Born. conceived. So we okay. have to give this message to the whole society that mm. the society has to play play its role. It's only it's not just the mother's health or mother's well-being. Mm. It's the overall system, the overall structure we have to prepare for our children. We we should be really doing more to give a better future to our children. As Chairman Sub said. 44% are uh, children are stunted. Uh, mm. I mean, what is the future of those children and what is the future of Pakistan with 44% stunted, stunted children? Both. So we have to really, uh, yeah. And I think, uh, right. So you uh, wanted one, to add more, one important thing that I would really want to address is that uh, as we saw that Rupani Foundation will not be able to deliver the message across the country, is a huge country. So we have created an alliance it's called uh, uh, Pakistan. Pakistan Alliance for Early Childhood. Okay. And we have started international conferences here. So in Islamabad, oh. uh, this week we have a conference on uh, early 25th. childhood uh, on the 25th and 26th, 26th of this uh, month. Oh. So yeah. within like on, on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Uh, this conference is very important. We have real authorities from all over the world is coming and speaking. So we have all international speakers and I would really want this to see if BTV can cover this because yeah. this message will need to go across the because country. we'll have really have a real world authorities on early childhood will be at this conference and we're right. expecting about 500 delegations from all over uh, the Pakistan country. and the region. We have other countries are joining in and uh, speakers are all over the, the world. Right. So okay. I'm going to emphasize that really please uh, come and see if you can um, uh, convey our message across. All right, so this is on the 25th and 26th, and 26th of, this of month. September. Yeah, this September, is a, yeah, yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday. Right? Yeah. Absolutely an amazing opportunity for all the young parents and even yeah. families out yeah. there. And I really have to say thank you so much to your foundation for highlighting the fact that when you're looking at you know childhood <coughs> development or planning the child, the only thing generally that we look at is the finances, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. are are we earning enough to support a child? Can we make it you know make him go to a very good school or whatnot? But these are the things I sometimes. Think about Unintentionally, that. these are neglected, but how crucial and important they are, you mm. guys are highlighting that. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank, Thank you so much you. for being here. Yeah. It was absolutely a good time. Thank you for the honor. Thank you very much. So with that, okay. ladies and gentlemen, we definitely have to head out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere because in this phase, we were actually talking about human development yes. and, you know, in general, how it's going to have an impact on the society. But in the next segment, we're actually going to talk about different cultures and how cultures can actually bring together society. the society members as well. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Stay tuned. Magla Hills, the heaven of Islamabad, the abode of God, a place where you can explore your soul and meet power of natural elegance of mountains. Spread over an area of 12,605 hectares, the Magla Range, the foothills of Himalayas, are youngest hills with an age of 5,000 years old. Magla Hills are home to around 600 plant species, 250 bird varieties, 38 mammals and 13 species of reptile. Magla Range is characterized by many valleys, scenic spots and beautiful water streams, especially in the monsoon months. Famous for their tranquil environment and lush green natural splendor, Magla Hills are a particular source of pride, harmony and spiritual solace. For the residents of Islamabad, 
many of whom make it a weekly ritual to scale the various trails to Dominico and Peace Suhawa. Magla Hill send off its visitors with blasting trail of memories to relish in solitude and provide an escape from the relentless rhythm of life. Welcome back to World This Morning with Shazad Khan and Shazad Hashmi, ladies and gentlemen, live from the PTV studios where it is a little chaotic right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But ladies and gentlemen, right now we've actually been joined by a very amazing and uh, a very superhuman being and it's because of the fact One of our that, favorite guests, that he actually. does not like to spend quite a lot of time with his wife and family. <laughs> so every now and then he's actually traveling to Pakistan. He's a journalist himself and uh, he's a great human being. He's from Japan. Uh, and he's married over there as well, and he's married into a political family as well. He's none other than Mr. Humayu Mughal. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you, Deska. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. How really are you? Always, uh, we're talking in Japanese, English. I, I really like your. You, how can you speak that five, six languages? Well, oh, well, well it's, more it's than not five. even six, it's more than that. And <laughs> five, six languages, I can actually say hi, hello, and ask and have a little bit of conversation. But that's great. And, okay. you know, the sole reason why I've actually learned all of these languages is mm -hmm. that when I go or travel all over the world and mm -hmm. when I do these shows, mm -hmm. so it is easy easier for me to convey and then when people see that you know it's uh, it's another person from another land yeah. you know they're, they're very impressed <laughs> and this is this is a true example of becoming cultures uh, you know uh, B making cultures uh, coming together yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's what it is and I believe that everybody needs to invest in it but Absolutely. as of now just explain us how cultures can bring society members together. You know, is, as, as you said, that the language is very important. Yes. You know, whenever you know, start your program and you say, Hayo Guzaymas, really, all Japanese are very happy. They're listening to oh, your that's voice. Nice. So this is, language is very important. When yep. you speak language, you can communicate. Yep. So communication is the first tool. Exactly. So mostly, you know, I learned Japanese here. I study Japanese here. So I prefer that if Japanese, you want to make multicultural understanding, you should learn Japanese exactly. more. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Japanese culture is very rich, yeah. but it depends on your language, if yeah. you can understand So, so let's talk about Japanese culture being rich. I mean, mm. what do we, uh, I mean, because I have never ever been to Japan, even mm. though Same I want here. to, because mm. uh, I believe that the kind of technology they have, uh, mm -hmm. the rest of the world does not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I really need to learn from them. And ladies and gentlemen, whenever we speak about Japan, the best part is, that their currency is now a little bit more than our rupee as well. But other than that, it, was, it used to be just equal to one rupee as well, the exchange rate. And the sole reason why they've kept it to such a level is so that uh, people kind of import a lot of stuff from Japan as well. Yeah. So, and we do. <laughs> yeah, and we do. And, and, and we love it. So, which is why, what, what kind of richness are we talking about? You know, first of all, I can tell you that it depends on your manufacturing. When you see anything is made in Japan, yeah. Yeah. you trust it. Yes, that, that, that's something. So, everybody's like to buy the made in Japan. Yeah. So, I got my made in Japan wife. Okay. <laughs> I got my made in Japan children. No. Okay. Uh, my grandchildren is made in Japan. Wow. Mm -hmm. So everything is made in Japan. That's so what are you like, doing in Pakistan? Uh, I, I born in Pakistan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the been, heart is Pakistani. My heart is Pakistani. My mind is uh, Japanese, but soul is still, you know, wow. Pakistan. Wow. That's All great. Right. So tell us a little about, do, do you think that uh, Pakistan and Japan have got a few cultural similarities? I mean, in terms of when we speak about joint family systems, I believe that Japan actually has that same system over yeah. there as well. 
Actually, you know, uh, about 30 years ago when, I, when yeah. I went there in Japan, it was a joint family system. Okay. But still, you know, they are very believe on the joint family systems. Yeah. Hmm. So I think the family is very important because this is your foundation to make your family, family make, you know, nation, nation mm -hmm. make and country exactly. and make, you know, it's a depend on your family system. Exactly. So okay. still they have very strong family system, you know. All right. So also, this was a few months back, you guys entered into a new era with the new empire. Yes, yes. How's that been going? You know, this next month is going to be a new ceremony that yeah. uh, royal family and our pri president uh, Araf Albi Saab is going to be participating. Oh, wow. Yes, that's why I'm here, you know, to yeah. make some that's arrangement right. and to how to All coverage right. for live from Japan. All right. So this will be, you know, so more than 2,600 years. They have mm. the history of era emperor changing. Okay. Yeah. And now this is the, it's the first time in history that a live emperor is giving his mission to his children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's very fantastic, and I think this will uh, make a bring a beautiful changes in Japan. Right, and Japanese do have a very strong emotional bond with the emperor themselves, yes. right? Yes, you know. They have very deep respect, you know, mm. especially, you know, uh, they call it as like a kami sama, not like, like a god, but he's, okay. a, he's a descendant of God. Oh, you know? okay. yeah. So he's a, like a high, high level priest, you can mm. say, the priest of Shintoism. Yeah. So he's really, uh, people love him, respect him. Even I, you know, I respect him. Yeah. I met them, I have related with their families. Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of award from them, you know. Wow. So this is, you know, the how to make, you know, your the culture diplomacy and your uh, sports diplomacy with yeah. other countries. I think what I am doing it in 30 years. Exactly. Hmm. That's great and wonderful as well. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, that's, that's the whole point. Yeah. Mm. Now, when you have a leader who's actually working for the betterment of the country and, who's, uh, and the family's done it for several hundred years, I believe that people are going to respect <laughs> that person anyway. And I think that this is something which other leaders actually need to learn to deliver and be able to deliver in a way where it is being very useful for the people of that particular country. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it's just a statement I wanted to give to for everybody out there. Everybody's wise <laughs> enough. And I think that everybody's going to get my point as well. No, absolutely. So when, when emperors, when leaders, they deliver, people fall in love with them because... Yes, it's a deep respect, you know, yes. it's, a, it's a spiritual respect, you can say. So actually the people's mind is, you know, built on the spiritual, you know, uh, as you say, value. Yep. And uh, Shintoism, I think, is a very, you know, long history, more than 2,600. Yep. Right. So I believe the Shintoism is a religion, but it's more than religion, it's a culture. Okay. Mm. So they have a four season, you know, yeah. like a spring, uh, autumn, or uh, winter, summer. Just then like Pakistan. After, like Pakistan, but every season they, they celebrate it with mm. emperor. Wow. So they make more like uh, it's, it's like a festival, yeah. and uh, this nation get more happy. And if anything happen, you know, sometimes they have very political problems, yeah. and mm. then emperor comes and he solves the problems. Wow! You know? So, so, it, right. so it's more like that you're having Eid four times in a year. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, four <laughs> times and, in a year. And I believe it's great. And this is the kind of culture we're talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we speak about uh, bringing the society mm. together, mm. imagine that you know, just after winter you have another celebration, just after summer or before summer you have another celebration. So just because of these celebrations and the uh, uh, being a part of the culture, imagine that everybody gets to see each other. Imagine that everybody Trust. gets to sit down with each other. Everybody gets to know who else is actually facing a problem. And mm. I think that this is what we need over here in Pakistan as well, that we really need to come out in, in a way. For example, you know, when we say that we actually have to, we, we are obligated to uh, read our prayers five times, right? Mm. So the sole purpose is that you go to the mosque, you go see other people, and you talk to them, and you get to know about whether they are in a problem or not. Yeah. And and I believe that you know our religion has actually given us all the values which we require to be an amazing society. Absolutely, yes. and very beautifully yeah, said thank as well. You thank you, I can see on your face you're proud of yourself. <laughs> well, I am too. But thank all right, you. moving on to you. So let's talk about bilateral, bilateral Japan and Pakistan relations in terms of you know even students exchange and whatnot. Because this was just a few days or weeks back when the foreign minister was in Japan as well. And now you mentioned president is going too. Yeah. What are some of the avenues that you think we can discover to promote these relations? Yeah, actually, you know, after more than 10 years, you know, this foreign minister went to Japan, you know. Yeah. More than, you know, 10 years. If you have no foreign minister, he said... Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. We didn't have you know, one. So, so I spent three days with our foreign minister, uh, wow. uh, Khurshid, uh, Shamimut 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 Kurishi. Kurishi yes. So he was with me. He's a very nice gentleman. Uh, he did a great job, you know. Yeah. He, he made uh, diplomatic relations. He gave a lot of awards to the Japanese leaders, parliamentarians. And the Japanese parliamentary was very happy, really, I'm yeah. telling you. I was covering live, making live streaming for okay. PTV, yeah. I'm sending the news here. And really, this is a very important that if your leaders go to their country, hmm. meet their, you know, uh, public, yeah. give them speeches and make a, you know, culture exchange. And not political, but uh, political also you have different opinion, different vision. But how to make, you know, friendship with a diplomatic relation is like a Pak-Japan friendship through culture, yeah. yes. sports. 
uh, maybe political views were uh, different views. So this time, you know, I think uh, the foreign minister very important role to do good diplomatic relations with exactly. Japan. Exactly, that's, right. that's great. But then at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important message for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that, that some might feel a little uh, harsh, but uh, some are actually going to agree to it as well. That whenever we send a representative from Pakistan, I believe that that particular person should actually be an expert in business as well. Because mm -hmm. when you go to the other country... Or have a delegation. Yeah, yes, yeah yes, you, you, you really need to talk about trade. And trade will actually help you lift your uh, you know, economic barriers as well. So I think that from Japan, whenever we speak about Japan, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm a strong believer, I'm a staunch believer that Pakistan really needs to invest into information and technology yes. and we really need to develop our own gadgets and uh, we can seek help from Japan in that matter hmm. because for the rest of our lives we cannot really be a farmer and we cannot really grow these fields. The world's changing, we really need to step into technology. How do you think that Japan can actually help us in getting advanced in technological requirements? You know, this time uh, when foreign minister went there, he made a lot of agreements. You know, a lot yeah. of companies are coming to you know, Pakistan. They are investing it. Okay. Uh, very big companies. So I hope uh, they can help more. But now this uh, Japan is making, you know, is the free visa for student now. Wow. He's asking that the skilled laborers should be come to Japan. Okay. okay. Uh, they, they should go work there. Okay. And uh, for they have uh, one condition that you should learn Japanese first. Okay. So oh, okay. to learn Japanese here in Japan, uh, in yeah. Pakistan. So they have a lot of lot of my friends are doing you know, this uh, Japanese schools here. Well. Just learn two months or three months there. You can speak. Okay. Not professional, but you can communicate. Yeah. Mm, at then least you the basics go, we know. Yes, yeah. and then you can go in your field. If you're former, you can do former there. If you're technical, you can go to the technical field. If you're in IT, you can go. So this do they time, have you English know, TV channels there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we have English TV channel. One is NHK and one is my channel, one wow. is Mughal TV. Oh, wow, nice. that's great. Come to my channel. <laughs> well, well, that's great. But yeah, uh, right uh, towards the end. Uh, we just have a simple request that you're going to sing us a song in a Japanese uh, language. Okay. So please go ahead and okay. then we'll wrap up the show. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Uh, every time you request me, so <laughs> yeah. I think I We enjoy it so uh, much. Really? So I think maybe you don't understand, but you can feel the spirit of yes. it. Of course. It's like a very emotional song. Yeah. So I'm going to sing okay. it, okay? Go ahead. Namidama Sore to mu osanai ano korono hani dakareta komori uta ah yume hagure koi hagure nakeba naku hodo sabishi kuse ni anta de aita yo anata ai tai yo. Wow. And you know what? That Music definitely has no language because as you already said before you were singing the song that you can feel it and I yes. did. Yeah. But I do want a little explanation of the lyrics though. Yeah, actually you know, it's a love song, you know, when you separate from your girlfriend or your yeah. maybe wife, whatever, beloved. Yeah. Okay. You want to, you know, make a re-meeting. Okay. Hmm. So you're calling for your darling, hey, come on baby, I'm very lonely, <laughs> I want to meet you. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much for light lighting our morning. Yeah. Like every time, thank you so much for being here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, before we do, you know, sort of sign off for today, yeah. um, watch out PTV World for throughout this week because, of course, our Prime Minister, our delegations are in the US for this UNGA uh, session as well. And just yesterday, there were uh, speeches and remarks made by Trump himself as yeah. well that I didn't like, but definitely I'm going to watch out. Stay tuned to PTV World to, uh, you know, listen to all the things yeah. that, developments that are going to be made today. Exactly. Imran Khan is also going to have bilateral meetings with world's leaders. Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, please do not forget to write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of... Well This Morning. On Twitter. Well This Morning without a G. Our Daily Motion in YouTube. Well This Morning or PTV World. Yeah, and the fabulous repeat is going to be at... 5 past 11 p.m. tonight. Till the next time, one, two, three. <laughs> Good, Good morning. morning.